from the womb of prophecy, an immortal story was born. A prophecy that shook the throne of Egypt and immortalized the name of a great prophet. From the lineage of Abraham, a boy is born who will end the tyranny of Pharaoh. A strange dream that disturbs the tyrant's sleep. How did the prophecy come true? What was the dream that shook the throne of Egypt? And how did Moses confront Pharaoh? Welcome to your channel, Story from History. In this video, we will talk about the story of the children of Israel and their prophet Moses. The children of Israel are the children of the prophet of God, Jacob, nicknamed Israel. The son of the prophet of God, Isaac. The son of the prophet of God, Abraham, peace be upon them. They numbered 12 male children, including the prophet Joseph. They were following the religion of their grandfather, Abraham. Biblical history states that Abraham's two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, were born in what is known today as Palestine. Joseph, peace be upon him, is the son of Jacob and Rachel. Jacob loves him more than his brothers, so his brothers envied him because his father loved him more than them. They conspired against him and threw him into a well. Then some of the people of Midian took him to Egypt and sold him as a slave. The king's police chief bought him. Then, after he became a young man, he was seduced by the wife of the police chief. But he refused, so she accused him unjustly, and he was thrown in prison for years. There, he gained the trust of the jailer, so he appointed him over all the prisoners. Joseph became famous as an interpreter of dreams. The king of Egypt appointed him as a minister, after he interpreted the king dream about seven fat cows eating seven skinny cows. He explained to him that Egypt would go through seven years of satiety and seven years of famine. He suggested storing grains during the years of satiety to avoid famine. The king appointed him head of his stores, a position similar to the position of minister of supply in the present era. Then his father and all his brothers came from Palestine to escape the famine. He honored them and settled them in Egypt during the rule of the Hyksos. Then Jacob died and they buried him with his fathers in Palestine. Then they returned to Egypt and resided there. Then death came to Joseph, so he commanded that they carry his body with them if they left Egypt, to be buried with his fathers. So they mummified him and put him in a coffin in a tomb to take with them if they left Egypt. The children of Israel married among themselves and multiplied. It was said that the children of Israel refused to assimilate with the Egyptians, so they isolated themselves from them. This is to ensure that their lineage is preserved, out of pride in it, considering that they are descendants of the prophets. After three centuries or more, Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt, and his minister Haman persecuted them and enslaved them. They used them for the worst jobs and crafts. The reason for their persecution was because they collaborated with the Hyksos, who were occupying Egypt against the interests of the Egyptians. Although they lived with the Egyptians for many years, and the Egyptians considered them a part of them. However, they were isolating themselves from the Egyptians. Therefore, when the Hyksos rule ended, the Egyptians considered them enemies and abused them. In addition to that, the children of Israel were mentioning among themselves what they had learned from their grandfather Abraham, peace be upon him, that a boy will emerge from his descendants, and at his hands the ruler of Egypt will be destroyed. Pharaoh and his entourage mentioned what the children of Israel were talking about and that they were waiting for this and did not doubt it. Pharaoh said to his courtiers, What we can do with the children of Israel. They said, We will send men to slaughter every male child among the children of Israel. So they did that. Until they found that the elderly among the children of Israel were dying in their prime and the young were being slaughtered. So Pharaoh's entourage gathered and said, you are about to destroy the children of Israel. You will not find any servants for yourself, so you will have to work on your own. After discussions between them, they decided to kill every male child born to the children of Israel in one year and leave the newborns in the following year, and so on. So their number will not increase, and they will become a minority who serve us. Then Pharaoh saw in his dream as if a fire had come from the direction of the holy house, burning the houses of Egypt and its people, but it did not harm the children of Israel. When he woke up, he gathered the priests and magicians and asked them about this dream. 
the priests said to him, This is a boy who will be born from the children of Israel. The destruction of the ruler of Egypt will be in his hands. And the priest's interpretation was correct. Moses, peace be upon him, was one of the children of Israel. The mother of Moses was pregnant with his brother Haran in the year in which the births are not slaughtered, so he was born safely. But the next year she was pregnant with Moses, so she was concerned and sad about of what the Pharaoh's soldiers will do with her baby. So God Almighty revealed to her, after she gave birth to Moses, to put him in a coffin, and then put him into the river, and that the Almighty will return him to her again. So she did what God had revealed to her. But when the water took the coffin away, and her son Moses disappeared from her eyesight, Satan came to her, to make her suspicious of God's promise to her that Moses will return. She felt remorse and said to herself, What did I do to my son? If I had left him to be slaughtered by Pharaoh's soldiers, it would be better than leaving him in the river. The water took the coffin until it reached the beach. Where is the place from which the maids of Pharaoh's wife get water? When they saw the coffin, they took it to the wife of Pharaoh. When the coffin opened, she saw a beautiful child in it. And God threw the love of this child in her heart the first moment she saw him. When Pharaoh's soldiers heard the matter of this child, who was found in a coffin, they went to see the wife of Pharaoh to slaughter him. Pharaoh's wife said to them, Leave him to me, he is just a child. Leave him until I go to Pharaoh and ask him to let me keep the child. And if he accepted, so you have done a good thing. And if he refused, I can't blame you. So she went to the Pharaoh and said, Do not kill him, hoping that he will benefit us or take him as a son. Pharaoh said, You can keep him. He may benefit you, or you may consider him your son, but I do not need him. Thus Moses escaped death with a plan from God Almighty. The Pharaoh's wife sent to breastfeeding women all those around her to bring Moses a breastfeeder. But every time Moses refuses breastfeeding until the Pharaoh's wife was afraid, Moses would die of starvation. She ordered her servants to go out to the market, and women gathered in an attempt to find a breastfeeder for Moses. But what they do not know is that God forbade Moses breastfeeding except from his mother. So Moses did not accept breastfeeding from any of these women. Moses' mother felt anxious and afraid for her son, so she asked his sister to follow his news among people. Is he alive or dead? She forgot what God promised her. His sister went out to seek his news until she knew what happened. She said to the maids of the Pharaoh's wife, I can show you a woman who will guarantee him service and breastfeeding. She is my mother. They agreed and asked her to bring her mother. So she went to her mother and told her what happened. When the mother of Moses came up, she put him in her lap, and he started breastfeeding until he reached fullness. The maids went to the wife of Pharaoh, preaching her that they have found a breastfeeder for her son. So Pharaoh's wife sent for Musa's mother and said to her, Stay with me and breastfeed my son, for I cannot bear him being away from me. But the mother of Moses, after her heart was reassured and remembered God's promise to return her son to her, she said to Pharaoh's wife confidently, I cannot leave my home and my children. If you agree, I will take him to my house and he will be with me. Thus, God fulfilled his promise and Musa's mother returned home with her son. When Moses grew a little older, Pharaoh's wife said to Moses' mother, I want to see my son. So she agreed with her on a day to show him to her. When he entered upon her, she revered and honored him and his mother, and she was happy with him. Then she said, I will take him to Pharaoh so that he may honor him. When she entered upon him, she placed Moses in his lap. Then Moses took Pharaoh's beard and pulled it to the ground. The Pharaoh's courtiers said to him, Remember what God promised his prophet Abraham. So Pharaoh was afraid and ordered his soldiers to slaughter Moses. The Pharaoh's wife came running to him and said, What did you intend for this child after you gave him to me? He said, I will kill him before he defeats and kills me. She said, We will do something about which you will know the truth. Bring two coals of fire and two pearls and bring them to the child. So if he takes the two pearls and avoids the two burning stones, you will know that he is of sound mind. And if he takes a coal of fire, you will know that no one would prefer coals of fire over pearls while he is of sound mind. 
So Pharaoh did what she said, and Moses took the ember and put it in his mouth, so they took it away from him. Thus, God distracted Pharaoh from killing Moses after he had intended to kill him. Days passed, and Moses became an adult man and a defender of the rights and dignity of the children of Israel. And none of Pharaoh's men could mistreat any of the children of Israel, oppress them, or force them to serve him. Until that day, Moses passed by two men fighting. One of them was one of the Pharaoh's men, and the other from the children of Israel. So the Israelites appealed to Moses for help against the Pharaoh's man. Moses became very angry with the Pharaoh's man because he insulted the Israelites. So Moses stabbed Pharaoh's man with his hand to keep him away from the Israelites. But unintentionally, the man was dead. Moses felt remorse because he did not intend to kill him. Then Moses said, This is the work of Satan. He is a clear, misleading enemy. Then he said, Lord, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. So he was forgiven. No one saw what happened except the Israelites. Moses became afraid in the city, waiting for the news. Then people came to Pharaoh and said to him, The children of Israel have killed a man from us, so take revenge on them. Pharaoh said, Bring me the killer and witness against him, and I will take your revenge. So they started looking for evidence that led them to the killer. But in vain. Then the situation was repeated again. As Moses passed by and saw that Israelite fighting another Pharaoh's man, so the Israelites appealed to Moses for help against the Pharaoh's man. But Moses regretted what happened the first time. He became angry with the Israelite when he saw him fighting again. So Moses turned towards him and said, Indeed, you are an evident deviator. The Israelite looked at Moses in fear when he saw him heading towards him angrily and said to him, O oh Moses, do you intend to kill me as you killed someone yesterday? So Pharaoh's man went rushing to his people, and he told them what he heard from the Israelites, that Moses was the one who killed the man. So Pharaoh sent soldiers to kill Moses. Pharaoh's soldiers walked along the road searching for Moses, but a man from Musa's family hurried and took a short route until he reached Moses before them, and he informed him of the matter. So Moses went out, heading towards Midian, an area located in the Arabian Peninsula. He didn't know the way to Midian, but he thought well of his Lord and said, Perhaps my Lord will guide me to the straight path. Moses arrived in Midian specifically to the area where there were fresh water wells. He found many shepherds crowding the water, watering camels and sheep, and he found two women with sheep standing far from the water and preventing their sheep from reaching the water. He said to them, What is the matter with you? that you do not water with the people. They said, We do not have the strength to compete with the people. So we are waiting for what remains of the water. Moses began to scoop a lot of water into the bucket and watered the sheep for them. When he finished, the two women went with their sheep to their father. It was said that this father was the prophet of God, Shuaib, but this matter is not certain, and there is disagreement among historians. Moses went away and sat in the shade of a tree and said, My Lord, indeed, I am in need for whatever good you would send down to me. When the two women returned to their father, he was surprised at how quickly they returned with the sheep. So he asked them what happened. They told him what Moses had done to them. He ordered one of them to go to Moses and invite him. So one of the two women came to him walking with shyness and said, My father is inviting you to reward you for watering the sheep for us. When Moses met him and told him his story, he said to Moses, Do not be afraid, you have been escaped from the unjust people. Neither Pharaoh nor his people have any authority over us. We are not in his kingdom. One of the daughters said to her father secretly, Father, hire him. He is strong and trustworthy. Her father said to her, How do you know that he is strong and trustworthy? She said, I saw his strength when he watered the sheep for us. I have never seen a man stronger in that watering than him. As for his honesty, he looked at me when I went to him. But when he knew that I was a woman, he turned his face away. And he did not look at me until I told him your message. Then he refused to walk behind me so as not to look at me. And he asked me to walk in front of me and tell him the way, only an honest person do this. The father was convinced by his daughter's words. He said to Moses, 
I want to marry one of my two daughters to you. In exchange for you working for me for eight years, and if you complete ten, it is a blessing from you, and I do not want to make it difficult for you, and you will find me a good man. Moses agreed to the marriage and remained in the man's service for ten years. Moses longed for his country and his people, so he decided to visit them in secret so that Pharaoh and his people would not know. So on a dark, rainy night, Moses went out, heading to Egypt with his wife and the sheep that his father-in-law had given him. After a while of walking, they stopped to rest. Moses wanted to light a fire so that they could warm themselves with its heat. He tried a lot, but it did not work. Moses was amazed at his inability to light the fire. While he was like that, he saw fire from the direction of Tur Sinai Mountain. When he saw it shining in the distance, he told his wife about it, and he told her to wait for him until he went and brought a flame of fire to warm them from the cold. When Moses reached the fire, he found it to be a burning green tree at the base of the mountain, so he stood in amazement at its matter. While he was confused, he heard a voice calling him, saying, O oh Moses, indeed, I am Allah, Lord of the worlds, so take off your shoes. You are in the sacred valley Tua, and I have chosen you, so listen to what is revealed to you. Verily, I am Allah. There is no God but me, so serve thou me only, and establish regular prayers for celebrating my praise. And what is that in your right hand, O Moses? Moses said, It is my rod on it, I lean, with it, I beat down fodder for my flocks, and in it I find other uses. Allah said, Throw it, O Moses. So he threw it, and behold, and it was turned into a snake, active in motion. Allah said, Seize it, and do not fear. We shall return it at once to its former condition. And now draw your hand close to your side. It shall come forth white and shining without harm, as another sign. In order that we may show you two of our greater signs, Go to Pharaoh, for he has indeed transgressed all bounds. Moses said, O oh my Lord, expand my breast and ease my task for me and remove the impediment from my speech so they may understand what I say and give me some help from my family, my brother, Haran, add to my strength through him. Allah said, Granted your prayer, O Moses, go you and your brother with my signs and do not slacken or become weak in my remembrance. Go to Pharaoh, Verily, he has transgressed, and speak to him kindly. Perhaps he will accept admonition or fear me. So go to him and say, Verily, we are the messengers of your Lord. So let the children of Israel go with us, and torment them not indeed, we have come with a sign from your Lord, and peace will be upon who follow the guidance. Then God inspired Haran and commanded him to meet Moses, and Moses rushed with his staff until he met Aaron. They went together to the door of Pharaoh's palace and found it closed. Moses told the guards to inform Pharaoh that the messenger of God is at the door, so they started making fun of him. Moses and Aaron were not allowed to enter a very long time later until Pharaoh gave them permission. So they entered to meet the Pharaoh, and he was sitting with the leaders of his people. Moses and Aaron said to him, We are the messengers of your Lord. We invite you to worship God. Lord of the worlds, alone with no partner, and to free the children of Israel from captivity, and stop your oppression and power over them, and you let them worship their Lord wherever they want. Pharaoh became arrogant in himself. He looked at Moses with contempt and said to him, Didn't we raise you when you were a child? And you lived with us for years. We did good for you, and bestowed blessings upon you for a long period of time. Then you killed one of our men, and fled, denying our blessing. Moses said, I killed him while I was unguided, before God revealed to me. Then I fled when I felt afraid of you. So my Lord granted me prophecy and made me one of the messengers. And if you have done good to me, I am just one man from the children of Israel. On the other hand, you used the entire children of Israel and enslaved them in your work and service. Pharaoh said, what is the Lord of the worlds who sent you? Moses said, Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them. Pharaoh said to those around him sarcastically, Don't you listen? So Moses continued saying, Your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. So Pharaoh looked at those around him and said to them, Your messenger, 
who was sent to you is crazy. So Moses continued, saying, Lord of the East and the West and all that in between them, if you understand. Moses' words represented the logical evidence of the Creator's existence against Pharaoh. Nothing remains for Pharaoh except stubbornness. So Pharaoh stood up arrogantly and spoke to those around him in a loud voice, saying, O oh, my people, I do not know that you have any God other than me. Then he said to Moses, If you take a Lord other than me, I will imprison you. Moses said to him, Even if I bring you a clear evidence, Pharaoh said, Bring it to me if you were of the truthful ones. So Moses threw down his staff, and it was a terrible, very large snake that opened its mouth and headed quickly towards Pharaoh. When Pharaoh saw that, he felt extreme terror and great fear. Then Moses put his hand into his pocket and took it out, and it was as white as the moon, shining with a dazzling light. When he returned it to his pocket, it returned to its original state. Pharaoh said to those around him, these are two magicians who want to expel you from your land with their magic. So what do you advise? They said, postpone the matter for them and send among the cities to gather the magicians. There are so many of them on your land that their magic overpowers the magic of Moses. So Pharaoh sent for seeking every skilled magician. When the magicians came to Pharaoh, they asked him about Moses. What does this magician do? Pharaoh said, he performs magic with sticks and snakes. They said, by God, there is no one on earth who performs magic with snakes and sticks better than we do. Then they said to Pharaoh, is there indeed a reward for us if we are the predominant ones? He said, yes, and indeed, you will be one of those near me. So they agreed on a day, and this day was a feast for the Egyptians. Pharaoh, his wife, his princes, and his followers were present and people gathered to celebrate their holiday, and some of them said, we might follow the magicians if they are the predominant. Moses approached, he advised the magicians, and forbade them from false magic that contradicts the signs and proofs of God. Moses said to them, woe to you! Do not invent a lie against Allah, or he will exterminate you with a punishment. The magicians disagreed among themselves. Some of them say these are the words of a prophet, not a magician and some of them say they are two magicians who have mastered magic to gather people around them and control the kingdom. Then the magician said, Oh Moses, either you will throw, or we will be the ones who will throw, he said, rather throw. So they threw down their ropes and their staffs and said, By the mighty of Pharaoh indeed, we will be the victors. When they threw, they bewitched the eyes of the people, and their ropes and staffs seemed to be moving like snakes. Moses feared that people would be deceived by their magic before they witnessed his miracle. But God revealed to him, Do not be afraid indeed. It is you who are superior, and throw what is in your right hand. It will swallow up what they have crafted. It's just a trick of a magician. So Moses threw down his staff and said, What you have brought is sorcery. Allah will surely make it of no effect. Moses' staff became a huge and formidable snake, to the point that the people retreated in fear of it. Moses' snake attacked the ropes and sticks that magicians had thrown, and it quickly ate them all, while the people looked at it in amazement. As for the magicians, they saw something that confused them, because they knew that what they saw did not fall within the works of magic. When they threw their sticks, people thought they were snakes, but the magicians still saw them as sticks. And when Moses threw his stick, they thought they would see it as a stick, and would not be deceived like people. But they were surprised that they saw a huge, alive snake, and they were surprised by what it did to their sticks. So the magician said, If what we saw was magic, it would not have affected our magic, but it was one of God's commands. So the magicians prostrated themselves and said, We believe in the Lord of Aaron and Moses, and we repent to God for what we were upon. Pharaoh became angry and terrified by what the magicians did in front of the assembled people. He said, how dare you believe in him before I give you a permission? He must be your master who taught you magic. I will surely cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides, and I will crucify you on the trunks of palm trees, and you will surely know whose punishment is more severe and more lasting. They said we would never prefer you over the clear signs that have come to us, or over the one who created us. So decide whatever you will. You can only make a decision about the life of this world we surely believe in our Lord so that he may forgive us of our sins 
and the magic that you have compelled us to practice, for Allah is best in reward and more lasting in punishment. All of this happened while Pharaoh's wife was present, praying to God for victory for Moses over Pharaoh. But the princes and elders among Pharaoh's followers said to him, Are you going to let Moses and his people corrupt and invite people to worship someone else? Pharaoh said to them, We will kill their sons and conquer them. Moses said to his people, Seek help from Allah and be patient. The earth belongs to Allah. He gives it as an inheritance to whomever he wills of his slaves. But the outcome is for those who fear Allah. They said, We were oppressed before you came to us, and after you came, our children were being killed before you came. And now they will be killed again after you come, Moses said. It may be that your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you successors in the land to see how you will do. Days and months passed, and Moses waited for the Pharaoh to give permission for the children of Israel to leave. But instead, Pharaoh was persecuting Moses and his people and oppressing them. So God sent torment to Pharaoh and his people in different forms. God sent them floods that destroyed crops and fruits, then sent locusts on them, leaving them neither crops nor fruits, then sent on them lice, which prevented them from sleeping and resting, then sent them frogs that fell into their food so much to the point that when one of them opened his mouth for food or drink, one of those frogs jumped into it, and then God sent blood on them, mixing all of their water with blood. So when they fill water from a river or well, it turns into blood at the time. The children of Israel did not suffer any form of the torment that befell the Egyptians, and that was a miracle and proof from God that this torment was due to their disbelief in Moses and their oppression of the children of Israel. Whenever torment came, Pharaoh complained to Moses and asked him to stop the torment from them and promised to send the children of Israel with him. Moses agreed with him and prayed to God to lift the torment from them. When God stopped the torment from them, Pharaoh breaks his promise every time. Then Pharaoh wanted to stop the torment forever. So he said to his companions, Let me kill Moses as punishment for him, and let his Lord protect him from me. I fear that he will change your religion. When Moses knew of Pharaoh's intentions, he said, I seek refuge in my Lord from every arrogant person who does not believe in the day of the resurrection. But there was a man from the family of Pharaoh, believes in God, and conceals his faith from his people. He said to them, Do you kill a man without a crime, just because he said, My Lord is God? And he came to you with arguments and proofs, proving his sincerity and his claim. And if he is lying, he will not harm us. And if he is truthful, he will befall you with the torment he promises you. O people, you rule the land of Egypt, so who will protect you from God's punishment if it came to you because of the killing of Moses? Pharaoh said, The opinion is my opinion, and the ruling is my ruling. I decided to kill Moses, and I only guide you to what is right. The believing man replied, advising his people, I fear for you if you killed Moses a torment similar to the torment of those who were hostile to their messengers. So God destroyed them like the people of Noah and Thmud. God destroyed them because of their disbelief and denial of his messengers. Pharaoh looked at his minister and said to him, O oh, Haman, build me a very high building until I ascend to the sky and look at the Lord of Moses, who claims that he is truly worshipped, and I think that Moses is a lair in what he claims. The believing man said, O oh, my people follow me, and I will guide you to the right path. But they rejected his advice, so he said, You will remember the advice I gave you, and regret not accepting it. Pharaoh knew in himself that what Moses had brought was inevitably true from God, but he was showing otherwise out of arrogance and stubbornness. Pharaoh decided not to leave Moses and those who believed with him in the land of Egypt, either by expelling them outside or killing them, so that he could enslave the rest of the children of Israel. Moses called upon his Lord and said in his supplication, Our Lord, you gave the Pharaoh and the nobles of his people the rule of Egypt. But they did not thank you for what you gave them, our Lord. Erase their rule and make their hearts hard, so that they will not believe until they see the painful torment. And at this time, their faith will not benefit them. God said, I had accepted your prayer, O Moses, against Pharaoh and his people, so remain steadfast in your religion. God inspired Moses and his brother to take homes for their people that were distinct from the homes of the Egyptians, 
so that they would know each other's homes and that they would be prepared to leave, God also inspired them to perform prayers in their new homes. Then the moment came, and God commanded Moses to go out with his people from Egypt at night. And when it was the night of the feast day in Egypt, and some of Moses' people had borrowed gold from the Egyptians to decorate themselves. On the day of the feast, Moses went out with his people at night, without the Pharaoh and his people noticing. As they were busy with the feast, Moses and the children of Israel carried what they could of their money and hurried out in the dark when Pharaoh was informed of their departure. His anger at them intensified, and he began to gather his soldiers to chase them. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, but they lost their way, Moses said, wondering, what is happening? Elders of the children of Israel said, when death approached Joseph, he took a covenant from God that we would not leave Egypt until we carried his body with us, Moses said. Who knows the location of his grave? They said, an old woman from the children of Israel, so he sent for her, and she came to him. He said, show me the grave of Joseph. She said, I would not guide you until you gave me my request. He said, what is your request? She said, I want to be with you in paradise. So God inspired him to give her a promise. So she took them to a place where there was a swamp of water and said, remove the water. After they removed it, she said to dig, so they dug and exhumed the body of Joseph. When they carried it, the way was revealed to them and they set off to continue on their way. But Pharaoh caught them up with his soldiers at sunrise and the two groups saw each other from a far distance, the sea in front of the children of Israel and Pharaoh with his army behind them. Moses' companions were afraid, they said to him. Pharaoh and his army overtook us, and our matter was over. Moses said to them, No, my Lord is with me. He will guide me. Moses moved towards the sea, saying, My Lord commanded me to bring you here. When Pharaoh and his soldiers approached, God revealed to Moses to strike the sea with his staff. When he struck it, it parted, and each part was like a great mountain. Not only that, but also God sent a strong wind that made the land of the sea a dry land. God commanded Moses' peace be upon him to cross the sea with the children of Israel. So they entered it quickly, and when they crossed it, and the last one came out of it, the Pharaoh and his army had arrived at the shore where the children of Israel were standing. So Moses wanted to strike the sea with his staff to make it close, and it goes back to how it was, so that Pharaoh and his soldiers would not have a path to reach them. But God commanded Moses to leave the sea in this state. As for Pharaoh, he stood looking at the sea in a state of astonishment. He was certain that this was the work of God. So he was afraid to follow them and enter the sea. But he did not show his fear to his soldiers. He regretted in himself that he had chased Moses, and he feared that his soldiers would be affected by what they saw. So he said to them, Look how the sea receded for me so that I could catch up with my servants who disobeyed me. He stood hesitantly in front of the sea, afraid to enter it. But Pharaoh's horse entered it quickly against his will. And when the soldiers saw that he had entered the sea, they quickly rushed after him until they were about to leave the sea. God commanded Moses to strike the sea with his staff. So he struck it and the sea closed on them as it had been. The waves began to lower Pharaoh at times and at times to raise him up. And the children of Israel looked at him and his soldiers when Pharaoh became certain that he had perished and felt the approach of his death. He began to cry out and say, I have repented to God and believe that there is no God except the one in whom the children of Israel believed. The angel Gabriel was there. He feared that God's mercy would precede his wrath and God would forgive the Pharaoh and rescue him. So he took some of the sand from the sea with his wings and put it in Pharaoh's mouth to silence him. Thus, Moses' supplication against Pharaoh and his army was fulfilled, that they would not believe until they saw the painful torment when that would not benefit them, and it would be a regret for them. Some of the children of Israel doubted the death of Pharaoh, and some of them said that he would not die. So God commanded the sea to bring out his body, so it came out wearing his armor and his clothes, which they knew, so that they could verify his death and know that God was capable of him. After God saved Moses and the children of Israel from Pharaoh, many exciting and strange events occurred, including the worship of the calf by the children of Israel, the story of Moses with Karin, the story of Moses with Alkeder, 
and the story of the cow of the children of Israel. But each story needs a separate video, and we will display these videos on the channel. So if you are interested in knowing the rest of the events, you can subscribe to the channel to watch the upcoming videos. But the most important after their escape from Pharaoh was that God inspired Moses to take the children of Israel to the land of Canaan, which is known today as Palestine. The Canaanites are considered one of the first inhabitants of this region. They built most of the cities of Palestine. The Canaanites were strong, harsh, and tyrannical people, and their cities were large and fortified. So God inspired Moses that he and the children of Israel must fight them and expel them from Palestine, and he promised Moses victory over them. Although the children of Israel saw God's power and ability when he saved them from Pharaoh, and although God promised them victory, they refused to implement God's command and retreated from fighting not only that, but also they said to Moses, We will not enter this city as long as these people are there. So go, you and your Lord, and fight them, and we will sit here waiting for you. What they said was enough to make God angry with them and punish them with the most severe punishment. So Moses called upon his Lord and said, O my Lord, I have no control over anyone but myself and my brother. God replied to him that he had forbidden the Holy Land to them, and he made their fate to wander for forty years, having no land to live on, until they all die. The place where the children of Israel got lost was the Sinai Desert in Egypt. They wandered there for forty years, unable to get out. The generation that entered the labyrinth all died. Even Moses had died before they came out of the labyrinth. Only two men remained alive from the first generation. One of them was Joshua bin Nun, who became a prophet after the death of Moses. He encouraged the new generation of the children of Israel, which was born and grew up in the period of wandering, to fight the Canaanites and enter the Holy Land. This new generation obeyed his prophet, so an army of the children of Israel gathered with their prophet Joshua bin Nun, and they went to conquer the Holy Land. But the city was heavily fortified, they besieged the city, and the siege continued for six months, until they were able to enter the city on Friday, and the sun was about to set, and it was going to begin on Saturday night. Work and fighting were forbidden to the children of Israel on Saturday, therefore. The children of Israel wished that the sun would stop until the battle was over. So Joshua bin Nun looked at the sun and said to it, You are commanded by God, and I am commanded by God. O oh God, keep it for me, indeed. The sun stopped until the battle ended, and the Holy Land was conquered. Thus, the rule of the Canaanites ended after lasting about 1,500 years. Prophet Joshua bin Nun lived among the children of Israel, ruling them according to the Torah and teaching them how to worship God, until he died. After the death of Joshua bin Nun, many prophets came to the children of Israel. Among them were David, Solomon, Yahia, and Zechariah, and other prophets. But they used to disobey their prophets, and even killed some of these prophets. So as God punished them by sending a king called Buchnadnezzar, who headed to Palestine, destroyed the city, killed some of the children of Israel, and captivated the others, and took them to Babylon. Thus, the Jews left Palestine at the hands of Buchnadnezzar and were dispersed, after settling there for about 400 years. If you like the video, please press the like button, and if you do not like it, tell me why in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you in next videos.